Right, here we are back again guys with the end of the year you know what that means more end of the year reviews so here we are top 25 worst albums 2023 so there's no honorable mentions because there was literally only like 25 albums that I listened to this work bad albums that I listened to not that much bad music so that was good so that's a plus let's go out of bad songs I guess but at number 25 getting right into it is guts by Livy Rodrigo now this album, I just don't understand the hype around it. Everybody's saying it's an instant classic. You know, people are saying, like, this is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. It's not. Just grow. In a couple of years, you'll realize that it is not. And then the worst part is when people say it's better than Sour. Now, that really gets to me because Sour is an 11 track masterpiece from start to finish, from brutal to hope you're okay. The, some of the best lyrically writing I've ever heard in a song, best production I've heard on the album. Like, you got Driver's License, you got Happier, you got Traitor. Like, all of those songs are so written well. Favorite Crime, all those songs are written well. And then you got Guts, which is talking about, like, Bad Idea, right? Like, I got my friend, Bad Idea, right? And then Get Him Back and freaking All American Bitch. Like, those songs are just awful. Straight up awful. Like, they're not even good for writing. Not even good for, like, pop punk tracks in general. Like, she has good pop punk tracks, like, Good For You and Brutal. Like, those are actual good songs lyrically and produ production like the whole album is just a mess here and it goes from pop punk track to slow track pop punk track to slow track funk track to slow track like it's not good it's all messy i do i will say there are some gems on here like i do like the lead single vampire i thought that was a pretty good song and then i'd say logical was good and maybe teenage dream but um i don't know Lacey was all right too um i don't have a beef against that one but uh but yeah it's mostly the rock tracks that she does here and that's just what irritates me every time and when she's like like oh my god it's just a messy album like production wise and lyrically like olivia pulled off a sophomore slump here guys she did not come back of the year 24 is uh the first time by the kid larry um i didn't care about this album at all I listened to it and I said, wow, it's 2001 again and I don't care anymore. 23, Afterlife by Yeet, the, this is just an off album. I did not like this at all. I just didn't like the, uh, the beats and the production sounded really loud compared to the vocals and it was just a messy produced album and everything that was on here was very shouty and loud and I did not care at all, no. And number 22, Hackery Diamond by the Rolling Stones, guys. Rolling Stones dropped that in 2023. The thing that nobody asked for. This is literally an album about 80-year-old men sexualizing women like they did like in the 70s, but they're doing it now as 80-year-old men, and it's just cringy, it's gross, it's disgusting. Just, just make it stop. At 21, though, Gift and a Curse by Gunna, his comeback after being in prison, you guys, his comeback album. Sucked. No surprise. Because I've never liked Gun. I've never liked any of his songs. This album was just awful and terrible. Like, um, no. Heading into the top 20, though, with Morgan Wallace, One Thing at a Time. 30 or something freaking tracks on this album. I did not care to listen to it. I think I listened to, like, half of it. And then I stopped at, like, the Ford F-150. Because it's like, tonight's looking F-150-50. That's when I turned it off. I was like, I cannot do this anymore. I'm done. And then I ended up listening to the rest of the album. And I realized that, yeah, this is just a messy album. It's so gross, so bad. Even last night, the lead single is trashy. Like, I did not care for the vocal last night. I don't know. If I, like, I don't know. There is uh, one song. I think it's like Dying Man, that song. That was pretty good. But there's like a song called Man Made a Bar. Like, literally saying that God created men. And then... God created a girl, girl breaks man's heart, man made a bar. It's like, well, that wasn't in the Bible, so it doesn't count. So it's like, I don't know. The Morgan Wallen's album is just messy. I've never liked him. I don't think I'll ever get on that bandwagon of this new country trap kind of stuff that's going on here with that in Florida, Georgia Line. No. At 19, it is Where Do We Go From Here by asking Alexandria. And I... I've got nothing for this one. At 18, Leanda Viva by 6 9 Yes, 6 9 dropped. And if you didn't know, that's because he dropped a Spanish album 
and basically a career ending. From 17, uh, Scarlet by uh, Doja Cat. Uh, when I listened to this album, I literally could not score it because I hated it so much. I was so pissed off just on how how the beats are, how, like, I just, after hearing the first two singles, the Paint the Town Red and Demons, I just could care less about this album. At 16, Life is But a Dream by Avengers Sevenfold. Avengers Sevenfold is back. They're bringing rock back. They're bringing it back. You hear me? No, they're not. Ben Sevenfold was back, was good back in 2002, guys. This album is awful. Like songs like We Love You and other tracks I can't remember. But it, it's just a me First of all, it's a messy production. The production sounds like it was made in 1987. And then the vocals are off, also awful because the vocals sound like they're made in 2014. Like, it may, it's like... The, do you want it to be an old album? Do you want it to be a new album? Are you trying to bring nostalgia to you? And the lyrics are so cringy and so bland that they, that they're making this like a safe album to put out there when it's not. Because you ultimately failed on the project that you were trying to make. Because nobody cares about Avenged Sevenfold anymore. And I don't care about this album. This album is sucked. 15, heading to the top 15, guys. Pink Tape by Louis Vert. He dropped it. He finally dropped Pink Tape, guys. And it's the worst rock rap album I've ever heard. This is why rappers don't make rock music, okay? This is why you should stay rappers. Have you listened to Lil Wayne's, whatever the hell, Reborn, whatever it was called? Have you listened to, have you listened to Eminem's Revival? Like, this is what happens when rappers make rock music. It turns out awful, it turns out terrible. It makes you want to shoot yourself. This album is uh, by far off. And then there's a cover of Chop Soy on here. Just randomly placed on there, and that's bad. And then he's got a sample of Sinsuke Nakamura song, which sounded cool at first, and then he adds this awful lyric and rap beats to it, and it's just terrible, terrible. Just an awful song. There's only one song that I could get by, and it's the one with Bring Me the Horizon, but that's because Bring Me the Horizon, I mean, that's because Ali Sykes basically carries the song. Other than that, this was a trashy album, and just awful. 14, though, 10,000 Gex by 100 Gex. 100 Gex album where it's just trashy, fucking high-ass music that you would listen to if you're high, I guess, you know. Like 13, Mansion Musk by Trippy Red. At 12, uh, Don't Get Too Close by Skrillex, the worst EDM album ever to exist. At 11, uh, missing the top 10 is Rush by Monoskin. Just... I've never like I've never been on the uh, monoskin train here with this, and this album proves it. This just shows that uh, they're they have, they're a rock gone wrong band. Um, like I've never thought they were the revival for this new rock era at all, and they never will be. Cause I mean, like, have you had the blah 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 blah? Hanging to the top ten now is "Lucid Dreams" by Boy with You. I guess I cannot stand Boy with You. Um, I feel like the ukulele that he uses in tracks are so cringy. Like, you can, like, I've heard songs, like House of Gold by Twin Pilots, good ukulele track. Like, there are some good ukulele tracks that are out there that you can still use for sad music, you know? And this, this whole album is just awful, like, Rockstar and all these other tracks, I can't remember, Blue or something like that. Like, they are awful and just, oh my god. It's a headache of an album. His lyrics are cringy. His voice is cringy. His ukulele on the beats are cringy. Sounds like he's using band lab to make these beats. It's off. Number nine is uh, Dolly Parton's co three hour cover album, Rockstar. And this is basically a cover album of 90s, 80s, 70s rock songs. And they are all so trashy. Because, first of all, her voice is already shot. And then, she's a country singer making rock songs and every every song is a headache there's not a single good cover not a single like not even a single cover i could say that's okay like i could get by there's this she tries to cover stairway to heaven which is a headache never do that ever again <clears throat> i hope led up and sues her for that one tries to cover heart of glass like that's awful too tries to cover a fleetwood max song every rose or uh tries to cover a uh Police song, I'm pretty sure, is on there. Like, 
There are so many songs that she tries to cover here, and it's just got all. At number eight is Dinosaur by Theory of a Dead Man. This album is just, like, an atrocity for Theory of a Dead Man. First of all, their last couple albums were not good at all, first of all. And this is, like, <clears throat> their standpoint, the staple to prove. This is basically their album to prove that they suck. Like, I don't know what they were trying to go for. And then they went a, they're doing a tour with, with Skillet called the Rock Resurrection tour you're telling me that you resurrected rock with this album an album that nobody's gonna listen to album that if somebody did listen to hence me will literally shoot themselves and not care at all and put it on a top 10 worst albums list the lyrics are so cringy there's a song called dinosaur summer song like it's awful it's so cringy it's terrible it's theory of a dead man moving on at seven the people's champ by Quincy AXX. People's Champ. This is literally if Andy Grammer made a collab album with freaking uh, Macklemore. I, like, that. that's... It's terrible. It's awful. Um, there's just so many cringy lyrics. Like, the song about her... How a girl brings out a backpack. And she has drugs in there. And he's never done drugs. But he doesn't want her to know that. So he, like, plays it cool. Like, saying that he has done drugs before. Like, it's so cringy, makes me want to bash my head into a wall every time I listen to it. At 6, uh, Maybe Man by AJR, oh my god. I don't know, this might be up there with OK Orchestra as their worst album. It, it's a headache of a monstrosity. Like, there's literally a line where he says, like, um, maybe I want to be a stone so I don't have to feel anything. And then later on he says, maybe I don't want to be a stone because... Then people can kick me around or something. It's like so cringe. It's so cringy. And then there's no hope on this album at all. Like turning out part three is awful. Um, and nurse is awful. Uh, Steve's going to London. Later song about nothing and how he talks about how I'll never be as cool as Kendrick. It's like no shit, you won't be as cool as Kendrick. And then there's yes, I'm a mess with the yes, I'm a mess. Like that's awful. The dumb song is awful. I won't. The DJ is crying for help. It's literally my top five worst songs of last year video. Go watch that too. But that song, was, the whole album is just a mess. It's awful. It's AJR. So what do you expect? It's nothing good. Hey, it's the top five. To whoever wants to hear. By Dream. Yeah. You heard me. Dream dropped an EP this year, guys. If you forgot that. Um, we had that Everest song where he talks about how he, always, he, how he wants to be as high as Mount Everest. And with Young Gravy talking about how he gives him hoes and he plays Minecraft with Young Gravy now. Like, I don't know, man. And then he has the song about putting you in the, I'll put you in the spotlight. All you have to do is sleep with me. Like that, that song. And then there's a whole bunch of other songs that I just don't care about it at all. Uh, his voice is awful, production is awful, and what do you expect? It's a dream album. Four, uh, The Brave 2, Tom McDonald. He's back. He dropped, he dropped Racist Album Part 2, guys. Dropped the most ra second most racist album on planet Earth. Remember, last year it was at number two. Again, he just comes off. It's literally the same thing as the last album. It's all racist slurs. It's literally him contradicting himself again. Like last album where he basically says something and then contradicts him, his own sayings in the same song. This is this his music's basically for the people who say, you know, I've never listened to I don't really like rap music, but this is good, you know? That that's basically what it is. And number three, uh, God Save the Teen by Mod Son. Now this was actually gonna be lower on the list, but as I was going through the re listens too, I put it up here because it deserves to be up here. Mod Son just proves that he he cannot bring back any pop punk stuff going on here. Uh, first of all, he had the internet killed the rock star, I think, and now he's doing God Save the Teen, which is you know, got, uh, internet killed the radio star, God Save the Queen. <coughs> it's awful. And then he has a song dedicated to Avril Lavigne, which I feel bad because the song is awful and cringy. Maybe that's why she uh. Divorced him, and uh, there's like a song called Revenge, which he has like these chants going like revenge, revenge, and it's mixed with his pop punk stuff going on. It's awful. He's got a song called Courtney Fuck Kurt, which is about Courtney and Kurt Cobain and how Courtney 
killed Kurt. Like, it's cor it's awful. Um, just the whole album is just a mass of awfulness. Then he has a song really called Wolves, which isn't even a pop punk track. It's more like a freaking rap song. Uh, it's more like, uh, like an, he has a song called Wolves, which isn't even a rock song. It's like an Oliver Tree song. Like, it's not even pop punk at all. But, it, it's bad, but, yeah, the whole album's a mess. It's, yeah, it's one of the worst p punk records I've heard, if you ever want, if I even want to call it punk. Two, it's the end of the world, but it's a beautiful day. 30 seconds to Mars. Jared Leto, guys. Dropped the second worst album of the year for me. Jared freaking Leto. This album is a horrible masterpiece. The production is awful. I don't know what they were trying to go for with the EDM kind of rock style here. It was just so cringy, so awful. And the, his voice on his tracks were awful as well. Like, no, the harmonizing they try to do, everything. The lyrics are cringy. Everything about this album just makes it. If you listen, go listen to it and tell me that this is not one of the worst rock albums you've ever heard in your entire life. And Jared Leto went to promote this album on the Empire State Building. They apparently climbed the Empire State Building. Now, Jared Leto is a being. I don't think he's a human. I don't think he's an animal. I just kind of think he's there. He's just him. And he made this music, so, yeah. Number one, the worst album of 2023. Owl City, Coco Moon. He's back. Owl City came back, guys, for the first time in, what, like, seven years? I don't remember. I don't even care. But he's back. And he made the most lifeless, soulless, lyricless, like, hopeless album to ever exist. Every song. Every lyric is bas is literally nothing. He's basically he looked outside and wrote about the weather. That's like, and then he went outside and he wrote about kids at a park. He went outside, saw Hy V, and said, "Man, I, I thank you, Hy V. You know, I, I really thank you for giving me my first job. You know, you know, I wouldn't be here without Hy V. It's such a cringy album." Awful and once makes me want to shoot myself. Some of these songs are six minutes long. Six goddamn minutes of an Owl City song of a lifeless, soulless, hopeless goddamn album. And the album is like an hour fucking long. I'm not going to listen to this. And nobody's going to listen to this. Nobody's ever going to look at this and be like, nah, I'm gonna, I got better things to do. It was so bad. You, you better be lucky that I listened to it because... Uh, I was on a freaking road trip with my friend, and I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just pop this on just for funsies, you know? And it wasn't even fun. There was no funniness to this. There was no goodness. It was just soulless. It literally sucked the soul out of my body while I was listening to this, just sitting there in my car, soulless, just thinking like... Right? It was awful. Awful. And I guarantee that nobody's listening to this album. I bet half of you who are watching this video... Or, no, probably 90% of you who are watching this video are probably like, Owl City dropped his album? What? That's crazy. You know, I, I never heard him since, like, Firefight. I remember that. He's like, like, no. I've never liked Owl City, so I didn't expect this to be that. But this is the worst Owl City album I've ever heard. Like, there's nothing to it. It's nothing. It's awful. Thanks for watching, guys. Drop the worst album that you thought came out in the comments below. See you next time.